Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored, appointed, anointed, and ready to serve, to surrender glory, and to do his will, not ours. Amen. Oh, glory. The heavens are open. The Father seeks those who will worship in truth and in spirit. Why? Because when we gather together, something happens. A portal opens. Now, demonic ports are open by bloodshed of humans. They're open by bloodshed of humans. So that's why New York is so open to demonic forces because they have portals that are open constantly because of sacrifices and because of disasters. The Twin Towers came down. Many people were killed. That opened a port. That's why it's our responsibility to call destructive fire down and every demonic port and their gatekeepers. Any port that's open, portal that's open, we are to call the destructive fire down. Does everybody get it? We must keep shutting them because they keep opening them everywhere. It's our responsibility as warriors to shut them. If you're a warrior. Psalm 5. Glory. That's why we have a penetrating prayer booklet for those that don't know how to warfare correctly. Here it is. It will assist you. Glory. Psalm 5. Everybody there? We're going to speak this together because it needs to be sown. It's an intervention prayer. And this country needs intervention. In fact, this world needs intervention. Amen? Is everybody there? Can we speak it together? I'm going to get a water pistol. Maybe a bazooka. And as we're speaking these, and if somebody's not, they're going to get shot. Boom! <laughs> or maybe just a paint gun. That way they got a little color in their action. Why? Because I'm going to destroy the religious. I'm going to destroy the religious spirit in the name of Jesus. It's disgusting. Hallelujah. Verse 5, I mean, uh, Psalm 5, verse 1. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. Do you do this? Don't answer me. You can answer to him. Because if you don't, you're out of position. I'm going to tell you right now. If you're not one that does these things, you're out of position. You are not connected Think about this. Am I connected or am I not? If you're not doing this, you're not connected. Because this is a connected heart to God the Father that does these things. Verse 4. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all the workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and the deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into your house in a multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. 
they flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out into the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him with a shield. That's protection. This is an intervention prayer by somebody who's connected. Does everybody get it? Again, if you're not a person that is coming to the Lord in the morning, you ain't connected. You're still worldly. You're still connected to the world. And it's time to get disconnected from the world. When you get up in the morning, if your first desire is yourself, then you need to exchange it right away. Your first desire is to connect. Does everybody get it? If you're not one who's wanting to connect, you're not useful to the king. The only thing you'll be useful to is the enemy. You can play all the religion you want. You can fake it as long as you want, but you ain't going to make it. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, happy days. Second Timothy chapter three. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Training for reigning. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse 1 we will start. Is everybody ready? But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Perilous times. Perilous times. When you really think about perilous times, I can tell you the definition by the Spirit. Perilous times are predetermined interruptions, dimensional shifts to draw attention, delay, or mislead those following the plan of God. I'll say it again. Perilous times are predetermined interruptions of dimensional shifts to draw attention, delay, or mislead those following the plan of God. They promote, these are promoted and provoked by individuals that are captives of corruptible time. And we're going to talk more about that tonight. These are individuals that are promoters and provokers because they're taken captive themselves, themselves of corruptible time. How many of you all know that everything's in a corruptible time? Amen. The world is under corruptible time. Oh, Holly, let's go a little further. Now he's going to explain who these individuals are. Verse 2, what does it say? Now remember, perilous times are what? Predetermined interruptions, aren't they? By the powers of darkness, this is what it is. Real simple. They're predetermined interruptions by the powers of darkness to mislead, delay, distract those who are followers of Christ. They carry the plan of God. They're to sway, mislead, and bring more of their corruption into people's lives. And they themselves are taken captive of corruptible time. These individuals, it says, for men will be lovers of themselves. 
Lovers of what? Money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And they will have a form of godliness, but they will have no power to overcome. And from such, he says, turn away. Don't listen to them. Don't follow them. Turn away from them. For these are the sort that creep into households through the news media. Hello? They make captives of gullible men and women, and they load them down with sins, and, and they lead them away with various desires. Those are lusts. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth because they can never get free. They stay in a management state of being and not a freedom. It says, now Janus and Jebris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth? You know, truth doesn't always feel good. Thank God we don't go by how we feel. Amen? Amen. As a true believer and connected, you never wait for conviction. You look for it. If you're waiting conviction or avoiding conviction or covering it over, then you ain't connected. But if you're an individual that's looking for conviction, you're looking to stay connected. So these are men of corrupt minds. Why? Because they're captives of corrupt times. Disapproved concerning the faith. They're not true followers. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. He says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, and long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Achaeum, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord did what? Delivered me. Wow. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and imposters will do what? They will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So they're going to believe the deception because they're caught in corruptible time. They're captives of it. But you must continue. That means consistent. In the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Again, perilous times are predetermined interruptions. They're dimensional shifts that draw attention, delay, or mislead individuals from performing the plan of God, which is called grace. Amen. Why? Because they have been taken captive in corruptible time. The promoters and provokers. So we see there's something called perilous times. Again, they're interruptions from the powers of darkness. But I'm going to tell you, God's got an interruption for the powers of darkness. That's called acceptable time. 2 Corinthians 5. Glory. And verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. happy days. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavenlies. 
For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Well, I want you to understand something that you and I groan because your flesh, your old man, is still a captive of corruptible time. That battle is constant with you. It is corrupt. It's an offspring of darkness. It's connected to corruptible time. That's why it's important that you and I constantly disconnect from the old man. Disconnect from his ways and his thoughts. Disconnect. The carnal mind can never be converted. Never. It must be taken dominion over. People are always wondering, gosh, when is my mind going to change? It isn't. The mind of you must yield to the Spirit to allow the mind of Christ to have dominion over the old mind. Somebody get it? There's a difference. So you and I groan because your old man, your flesh, has been still taken captive and a servant to corruptive time. And we're trying to break away from that all the time. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. It says here, Now he who has prepared us for this very thing, verse 5, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well, please rather to be absent from the body. No kidding. And to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim whether to be present or absent to be well what? Pleasing to him. For what we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, nobody gets away with nothing. Nobody. That each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God and also tr trust are well known in your conscience. Very powerful. Again, we groan because our fleshy old man is a part of corruptible time. We're constantly breaking out of it, breaking away from it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 16, tonight's teaching is called Acceptable Time. Second Corinthians 4, verse 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light, so I want you, so your outward man is perishing. In other words, your corruptive man. Does everybody get it? Your old man is perishing. But your new man can't perish. It's eternal. For our light affliction, which, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are what? seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are what? Temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. What is seen is called present time. And what is not seen is called eternal time. And what is not seen, eternal time is connected to your new heart. It's inward. It's a, eternal time is inward time. There's a knowing. There's a knowing of God's time. There's a knowing of his will. There's a knowing. That's what's called quickening. Because in you, you have an eternal time, which is timeless. Let's go to 
Isaiah 49. That's why those who are truly connected, they live a life of rest. They're always in rest. Not anxious, not fearful, in rest. And I didn't say arrest. That's called forced rest. <laughs> Hey, look, at for some of us, <laughs> a rest was the only way we got rest. <laughs> Praise God. We didn't want to get busted, but it was the best thing for us. Verse 7. Isaiah 49, verse 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhorred, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, in a what? Acceptable time. In a what? Acceptable, acceptable time is God's time of intervention. It's God's time of intervention. It's an acceptable time. It says acceptable time is a God, or the time of God's intervention to bring forth his agenda. In an acceptable time, I have heard you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. Why? Because it was his intervention. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth. To what? Restore the earth. To cause them to inherit the desolate heritage that you may say to the prisoners, go forth. In other words, get loosed. To those who are in darkness, show yourselves. I want you to know right now that we are in an acceptable time, the body is. It says, they shall feed along the roads, and their pastures shall be on all desolate heights. They shall neither hunger nor thirst, neither heat nor sun shall strike them. For he who has mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water he shall guide them. I will make each of my mountains a road, and my highway shall be evident, elevated. Surely these shall come from afar. Look, those from the north and the west, and these from the land of Sinam. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. Again, we are in an acceptable time. The body of Christ is in an acceptable time. There is a divine intervention that God is doing right now. It's called acceptable time. Amen? And what is this acceptable time? It is a time when God's intervention is to bring his agenda, which we call manifested grace or his plan. Amen. To the true followers, many will miss it because they're not connected. And bring back those that have been taken captive by corruptible time to break them out of that time into what we call acceptable time, God's intervention. You know, there's God's will and God's time. If they're not in unity, then it's out of order. Again, many people can read the Bible and do what the Bible says, but it doesn't mean it's God's time. And that's where relationship is so important. Because many people are, are what, what they call blind faith. And there's no such thing as blind faith. If you're in relationship with him, He's going to show you, tell you what to do, and he will confirm it with his word or a witness. Then you do it. That's called faith. 
That's moving in faith. And that movement is creating righteousness. It's his. But again, if it's not God's time, it isn't God's will. And so many people move out of God's time and get caught up in corruptive time. Not even knowing that they're in corruptive time, thinking they're okay. But they're really not. That's the problem. They think they're okay. None of us is okay. Amen? Sounds like a cereal. Okay. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 6. Did you have your okays today? Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians six in verse one. So we have perilous times, amen, which are demonic interruptions. And we have God's acceptable time, which is his interruptions on darkness, his interventions, amen? And we live in a present time, but we are connected to eternal time because of our new creation, new heart. And that's what the enemy likes to disconnect us from so that we are not in sequence. We're not in rhythm with God's time. And we fall out. He likes to get us to a place where we break out of God's time eternal time, into present time of corruption. That's his job. That's where people compromise. If he can get you to compromise, he can get you to fall out of time. Do you ever drive with someone that their car's out of tune? Amen? You want to pull over, open the hood up, do something about it. You know when it's not running right. You know when you're not running right. You know what? Why? Because eternal time is telling you, you're out of time, homie. It's time to get tuned up. Get an oil change. Get some new filters. Amen? Get some new eyesight. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 1. Let's speak. We then as workers together with him... Also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. In other words, don't, don't, don't disregard. Don't, don't take for granted. Don't be nonchalant about God's plan. See, there are too many people that are just nonchalant about God's plan. Ah, uh, you know, God knows my heart. Yes, he'd like to slap you right in the head. Wake up. Quit telling me I know your heart. I do, but you don't. Verse 2, for he says, in a what? An acceptable time I heard you. In other words, <laughs> I've got an intervention coming for you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. But in all these things, all the thing, but in all things, we commend ourselves. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 3. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things, may not be blamed, but in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God in the much patience, in tribulations, in needs and distresses, in stripes and imprisonments, in tumults and labors, in sleeplessness and fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections, desires, which are caught up in corruptive time. 
So again, God is moving. He's releasing provision, strategy, and weapons by his intervention. And he's releasing the early and latter rain. That means portions, double portions. Things are going to be getting, let me tell you, things are getting, things are happening already. The whole thing is, is not everyone is seeing it yet. There's an area of being connected where you sense it. Oh my gosh, you sense it. You can almost explode. You know the powers of darkness are running. But they're frightened. You know, when an animal gets cornered, it reaches out. It does everything. It doesn't even think. It just, it's just survival. See, the devil knows his time is short. The powers of darkness know their time are short Why they're being exposed globally. Amen? And it's acceptable time because it's God's intervention to the world. He came once already, didn't he? Didn't he come when Moses also, when he, he heard the cries of the people, he came. He sent Moses. Oh, hallelujah. Ezekiel 12. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 21. Everybody there? And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, what is this proverb that you, you people have about the land of Israel, which says, The days are prolonged and every vision fails. Tell them, therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will lay this proverb to rest, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, The days are at hand and the fulfillment of every vision. This is called time of fulfillment. What is time of fulfillment? I'll tell you that in a minute. It is a time of cooperation with those who are God's followers that are in eternal time and that are cooperating with his acceptable time of intervention to complete a pre-designated purpose plan. And I'll repeat it. Don't, okay? It was a It's a fulfillment of time. What is it? It's a cooperation of those in God's eternal time. Of course, that's of a new heart. And an acceptable, and his acceptable time of intervention. What is this for? To complete a pre-designated military mission under the rule of the Lord of hosts. Did you get it? Anyways, I'll repeat it. Praise God. <laughs> Let's go back to this for a moment. Verse 24. For no more shall there be any false vision or flattering divination within the house of Israel or God's house. For I am the Lord, I speak, and the word which I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed. For in your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word and perform it, says the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, look, the house of Israel saying the vision that he sees is for many days from now. And he prophesies of times far off. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, none of my words will be postponed anymore, but the word which I speak will be done, says the Lord God. Again, this is called a fulfillment of time. And what is it? Is the cooperation to those, of course, who are eternal timers. Amen? And so it's a cooperation of the eternal timers with his acceptable time, which is its divine intervention. So there's a cooperation between his body and his plan. His body and his plan. Amen? His intervention. 
And what's it for? To complete a pre-designated military mission. It's an operation. It's a mission. Listen, we are on a military operation. This is not a religious thing. The Lord is known as the Lord of hosts, meaning he's the Lord of the army. This whole thing had nothing to do with religion. Nothing. Jesus never came to be religious. He came to raise up people to become a warrior and put his spirit in them to cause them to learn how to fight. He said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring you a sword. That's a weapon. God came to bring a what? Weapon. And it wasn't a water gun or paint gun. It was an eternal gun called the sword of the spirit. Hosea 6. Why? Because it's, we're in an acceptable time right now. Hosea chapter 6. In verse 1, Hosea 6, verse 1. It says, the first verse says, come, let us return to the Lord. That means repent and come and turn. Come with humbleness. Come, return to the Lord. Come out. Break loose from corruptible time and return to the Lord. Amen. It says, come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us now, let us know and let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the what? Rain. The early, the latter rain and the former rain to the earth. And it's, why? Because that is associated with the double portion in the area where God's intervention, because it's this acceptable time right now. He is coming. He is pouring out. He's visiting the body. Remember, before he comes personally to the earth, well, he's not coming personally to the earth yet. He's going to take the body home first. But before he comes to take the body home, or the bride home, amen, because there's a lot in the body that ain't going home yet. Before he comes to take the bride home, he's going to come through the body first. The world will see the rise of the body of Christ bringing glory to God because he's the head and we are the body. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The reign of God and the rule of God will come to the earth. Three days, he said, on the third day, he will raise us up. That, that's resurrection. Third day, resurrection. Now, we just passed Passover. Now, there's something about the Feast of the Lord. They are acceptable times. The Feast of the Lord are acceptable times. Why? Because there's God's intervention. And they have been rehearsed and fulfilled. So only so many of them have been fulfilled. But God's feast, they're called the Feast of the Lord, are acceptable times. There's a Feast of Passover. Amen. Where he died on the cross. Then there's a feast of unleavened, which he went to hell. Because leaven meaning evil. And disarmed the powers of darkness, took the keys. And there's a feast of first fruits, which is resurrection. And then you have another feast called Pentecost. Which was 50 days after he rose from the dead. Which is actually Jubilee. Pentecost, meaning 50. So in this, we see that Jesus has fulfilled the first four feasts. The next feast is called Feast of Trumpets, which is the removal of the Bride of Christ from the earth. That is the next feast to be fulfilled. But in this, these feasts are celebrated every year. 
people acknowledge the feast. What are the feast? They are accepted acceptable times of God. There is inter Something is always happening on the Feast of the Lord. Every event. Now, we just had a powerful Passover feast. I'm telling you, for some reason, about this past, this last Passover, it was ripping. It was like there was a, an acceptable, true intervention of God doing something. In fact, it was one of the only feasts that we had a pink moon. It was a pink full moon for the Passover. I mean, if you saw it, it was extremely brilliant. It was beautiful. But it was a sign from God. And then we have, in a chaotic time, you know, the world is in chaos right now. Why? Because it's an enemy's intervention. Amen? It's an enemy's disruption. But God is intervening and disrupting the enemy. Even though the enemy is kicking and screaming and causing all kinds of chaos, he isn't going to win. It doesn't matter. So we see here that the purpose of the early and later reign is, to, is an acceptable time to release things to the body of Christ. It is to bring a fulfillment. It's to bring a what? A fulfillment. Again, we just celebrated Passover. It was a full pink moon in a time of chaos promoted by corruptible time to interrupt or delay or even stop what the Lord is getting ready to do. The Feast of the Lord are gatherings to open. Listen, the feasts are gatherings. Every time they celebrated a feast, an eternal port opened. And does everybody get it? An eternal port. Why? Because gatherings bring open ports. So the feasts are gatherings to open heavenly ports of divine intervention called acceptable times. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. It's the next one over. In verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound of heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, or tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout, men from every nation under heaven. Now again, this was the fulfillment of the feast of Pentecost. That feast is still being fulfilled. People are still getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues with power. Does everybody get it? It's not completed. It's not fulfilled. It's not done yet. It's still moving. When God speaks, His words don't stop. They continue to move. They can, in fact, the whole universe, see, we don't see what's happening. Everything is still moving. It's going through. The whole universe, all of God's creation is still moving. Because when he speaks, it doesn't stop. It constantly moves. We are moving at a rapid speed, but we can't sense it because we're protected. But in here, you will know that there's movement. You will sense a movement if you're eternally connected to his time clock. You'll know there's a sense of movement. Things are happening. In Acts chapter 1. In verse 1. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. After he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, 
being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So after his resurrection, he hung out for 40 days. He was visiting everyone, walking in rooms, freaking people out. You know. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he did something. He did what? He commanded them. He commanded them. Listen, he was commanding them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. In other words, he was saying, I'm bringing a divine intervention because it's a, listen, Jesus tells you to wait for something. That's an acceptable time. He, something's getting ready to happen. You don't take that nonchalantly. I am, maybe, I don't know. When a person is in that arena, it's because they're still in corruptible time. He said, for John truly baptizes with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Man, they were still a corruptible time. And he said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. In other words, for them it wasn't concerning. For me and you it is time. It is our time because we are an acceptable time with eternal time in us. We are to know times and seasons. So when somebody says, man, you don't need to know times. Yes, you do. In fact, everyone in the body of Christ should know the feast of the Lord. Why? Because those are acceptable times of God's divine intervention. And they repeat themselves. There are seven of them that repeat every year. Verse 8, he said, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was what? He was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Now that is powerful. Now I want to share something with you because this is so important. Again, after the 40 days, Jesus returned, right? Why? How did he re... <laughs> he created the portal. When he died on the cross, that veil that was ripped opened a portal. He couldn't come through that portal. He had to pay the price to get it open. He had to come through a womb. Does everybody get it? Because he couldn't come through a portal. He had to pay the price to create a portal where the veil was ripped. Now he created the portal, he could go through it himself. So they were all there watching, and Jesus went home. They came and got him. Why? Because he went through the portal, the one that he created open now. And then he sends his spirit 50 days later. Amen? So... The veil rips, he returns home through the porter. Ten days later, which is 50 days later after his resurrection, an acceptable time of intervention called the Feast of Pentecost. And he released his presence, his power and truth, we call the anointing, to those seeking him to fulfill the Feast of Pentecost, and also known as Jubilee, to empower them and to bring them debt free from sin from the entanglements and affairs of this world and cut them loose from corruptive captivity of corruptive time. May 31st, May 31st is another repeat of Pentecost. It'll be 50 days. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. 
we're going to see things begin to be released. Why? Because it's also jubilee. You don't get anything without being in position. Does everybody get it? It's not a game to play. It's not a religious state. It's not a prideful act. It's a humble surrender. It's a connection. It's a seeking every day. You know, the word says, ask, you receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. Those are knockers. They're knockers. They're interceding. Lord, power, fire, rescue. They're seekers. They're invaders in the powers of darkness. They're wa warriors. They're not going to God asking for things of themselves. They're going to God asking for souls, healings, deliverance for others. God knows what you need. Amen. Many corruptive fulfillments, I mean, many cooperative fulfillments will begin to fall into place following the Feast of Pentecost that will come May 31st. We are going to see some things. We're going to hear about some things. We're going to see much exposure of the enemy. He's going to be slapped. God's going to slap them. And the spoil is coming. Amen. Mark 10. Mark 10. Verse 28. We're going to need endurance. We're going to need wisdom and understanding. That prayer book, that you need to pray, divine wisdom and understanding. In verse 21, or 28, I'm sorry. Is everybody there? Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, there is... No one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive hundredfold now in this time, which is called present time, and houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with what? Persecutions. Why? Because the enemy isn't just going to let you have them. You're going to have to fight for everything. There's a required position. There's requirements that are, must be met to get anything. If you're not meeting the requirements, you don't get it. And in the age to come, what? Eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 4. Leaving all to follow. First Peter chapter four. What a time we're in, I'm telling you. I love it. It's so exciting what's getting ready to happen, what's going on. First Peter 4, 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But the end of all things is at hand. Well, I'm the only one speaking it. You guys would all have been soaked. <laughs> or different colors. <laughs> I'm ordering that gun when I get home tonight. <laughs> Maybe double. Sh sh <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't think I can't get over here either. <laughs> I 
Hallelujah. Verse 7. Did I say verse 7? Yeah. Okay. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him minister due to with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be what? Glorified. Through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning fiery trials, which is to try you. It says try you or challenge you. As though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are re reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory in God rests upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or thief, or evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment, to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore... Let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him and doing good as to a faithful creator. Next chapter, verse 1. First Peter 5. The elders who are among you, I exhort, I who am fellow elder as a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not as compulsion but willingly, not for dishonest gain but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when Christ, or chief shepherd, appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives what? Grace, the plan, to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in... Now, there's a due time that takes endurance. Amen? Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. In other words, you will see a fulfillment happen in your life for you. It says here, be sober. It's a requirement. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour or mislead. Resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So everybody goes through it. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered, after you've been challenged, after you've been pruned a while, may he perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you in eternal time. Amen? Waiting, trusting for the acceptable time in your due time. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And everybody said, amen. And to God be the glory. <laughs>